previously on The Grind. We met Mark Baldwin, a 16-year pro who was chasing Monday qualifiers and more status. He lives with his mother-in-law, he did till very recently. He has a child, he doesn't really have any money, he has an older car, and he still loves the game, still wants to make it to the PGA Tour, still believes he can. The glamour of pro golf. is hard work and it's dedication. In the world of professional golf, the difference between the elite and the rest is razor thin. It's definitely a different world, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> the grind is a dream. The grind is why we play this game. It's everyday hustle, getting up in the morning and being hungry. For these players, the grind is a state of mind. It's an attitude. It's the totality of their existence, and these are their stories. You can get to the PGA Tour and still be grinding. The grind never ends. The rewards that are just showered on players are just so enticing. After a health scare with his young son and a positive COVID test, the end of Baldwin's year was yet another test of his will and determination. When we last left Mark, he was quarantined in Orlando, having had to withdraw from the Big Money Classic. Now, back home in Arizona and working odd jobs, Mark has applied for a sponsor's exemption to the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. The event is eight days away. Mark has yet to hear from them. The old model of, of having a job in a pro shop and then going to play where the sun was shining, I just don't think that's possible anymore because if you're gonna be a touring professional, it's an all-consuming pursuit, you know, 24-7, 365 kind of job. And it's not really our, our mandate to help these players make it, but it's, it's a nice byproduct. You know, by shining a light on their struggles, they might attract some support from, from sponsors. That would be great. And we've already seen that with some of the players we've spotlighted. A sponsor's exemption to a PGA Tour event is not unlike one of Willy Wonka's golden tickets. And when the applicant has no status on any tour, he's almost always immediately and politely denied. We had worked so hard to try to see if we could get a sponsor's exemption. I remember Matt calling and Matt said, we have a phone call today. I want to get some shots for the grind about waiting for the exemption. Through some close relationships the Fire Pit Collective has with the leadership team of the tournament, Baldwin was about to catch a break. This has to be it, right? Like there's no way Matt's setting this up for not, but you still have that doubt in the back of your head of whether it is. Thank you for doing this. And I don't want to keep, keep you for very long, but my question to you is like, how, how often does this happen where your whole life is in limbo? Like how, how often is this the case? I haven't applied for many sponsor exemptions so this is actually somewhat of a, a novel thing for me. As soon as we heard that ding, we kind of knew what was happening. Hey guys. Hey, I just want to let you know you got a job next week at Pebble Beach. You're yes. in the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro Am. Yes. Let's go. To have this happen at such a storied venue and such an incredible event and to have such wonderful advocates here, it couldn't be any better. Can you say thank you? Thank you. you. You embrace what we are about. You, your story will resonate with a lot of people. Thank you so much. It means Take so care, much guys. To, to my family, and, and I, I can't wait for next week. Thank you. Well, we're thrilled to have you. The good news? He's in the tournament. The bad news? He has to pay to get to Northern California on short notice. He needs to find lodging in and around Pebble Beach. Trip costs add up quickly. It's very exciting and unexpected, but in such a good way. But with a spot in that event comes financial opportunity. Mark has been offered a deal from MGM. You just have to wear a hat? That's all the deal That's is it? for a hat. 18,000 credit for a hat. No cash, I zero cash. In. Really? Uh-huh. You're just in. Vegas. Oh, um, no, no, we'll like, only take the deal if they include childcare. <laughs> we would like someone to watch our child while we go clubbing for parents' night out. 
before we had Miles, I would go to almost every single tournament of his, and now I don't. I love seeing Mark play regardless. I caddied for him since we've met, basically. Now I'm kind of just like, I have to stay at home and get updates from friends and stuff, and it's just, it's different. I really wanted to go this week, but it's just hard with the baby. We don't really want to expose him. It's just kind of crazy because we moved into this new place and then he's in this event and everything is just happening so quickly, but it means the world to him and us. Ryan French, Mark's close friend and part-time caddy, has jumped a plane and made the trip from Michigan to Arizona. He'll be on the bag for the AT&T. Um. Um, you, made this a game. you made this a game, and now it's going to continue. Um, Both of us have worked together to make this a thing. It's very special to be with someone that is a great friend. I want him to succeed, but I also know he's going to be fine regardless of what happens this week. Look at that. Look at that right there. That picture right there. We make that putt. We're going to make that putt. We won't have a putt that long. Just watching a tournament from last year that we're about to be in. Insane. But we have to get you ready for night night. Right. Come on, buddy. I'll play the xylophone. Love that. I'm not going to say I was out of practice, but I, because I had to do the quarantine during COVID and then went home to see my family, you know, I just felt like I was a little bit behind. So this is where I'm going to put in the very last of my work before leaving for a life-changing week. We're uh, six days away from teeing it up at the at and Mark has the game to be out there. At this point, it's all mental. He did it at the Barracuda. He proved that he can make cuts and be out there, and let's do it one more time. I think the common thread that these guys share is they're competitive and they don't give up. They're just guys that they've got a dream and they're not gonna give up on it. They all know if they get that one shot, they've got a chance at it. They're gonna keep grinding until they get that shot. It's a huge week for Mark. I mean, he's a, he's a flusher, he flushes it. So he could do just as well as anybody else next week at Pebbles. This will be a huge opportunity for him to, to showcase that. Hold on, hold on one second. We have a deal. MGM will do a standard PGA Tour hat deal. 15K base, all trade, he can use that MGM property. John, coming through, man. Look at you, good on you. Great work. Cool. Things like that. Are just huge, man. His career has cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars up until this point. So, any little money back helps. So I'm not locked into my lease as of now. <laughs> I still have like three more days. <laughs> you might just move into the MGM. Maybe we'll just move into MGM. <laughs> the journey begins, everybody, to the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro Am. Let's go win a golf tournament. Is anybody here going to the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am? <laughs> Hashtag caddy life. Hashtag caddy life. Okay, I love you. I love you. I love you. Play well. I miss you. <sighs> you say bye-bye? Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Five days ago, nothing. Nothing. We were staring into the black void of existence. <laughs> and then real shit happened. Golf Tech deal, ink deal was already done. Croft School done. Well, Croft School. MGM. 37.5. You know what I really... Your biggest pro check happened off the course. <laughs> <laughs> as, it, as it is. As it is. Till, till Sunday. Mark and Ryan are off to the Monterey Peninsula to play in one of the oldest and most storied events in golf. It's so easy to say this is just another tournament, but it's not. What once was the Clam Bake, hosted by Bing Crosby, is now the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. And pros at this level get perks and benefits that most players on the grind can only dream of. Thank you. Let's go make a memory. 
this is something really special. And after Q School ended last year and I lost my status, I didn't expect to happen. It feels like I'm on a bonus train right now. Look at this, everybody. The train door was open and I ran alongside and jumped on. Straight ahead. Oh, look at all these, dude, we got SUVs. <laughs> Flew in Saturday morning, drove down and picked up our brand new Lexus that is free, nine miles when we got it. The easiest thing ever. I just showed up and they just handed me the keys to a Lexus and just told me to have a good day. I gave them my name. Yep. They gave me keys to a Lexus and they asked for nothing in return. They just said, okay, have a good day. Okay, everybody look, you look right, I'll look left. Oh, yep, yep, where is it? It's okay, there it is. It's okay. There's nothing wrong hey, with the, it. The alarm works. Yeah, I mean, it's a smaller one, but it's great. We may actually need to go back and request a bigger one. It's coming back. Watch this. Yeah, it's coming back. It's coming back. For sure. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be, be a good, good day. day. Buy glass golf course. The last guidance will start now. Yep. Ooh, that's soothing. Oh, look at this. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to stop. 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 Have a good day. Thank you. you don't have to stop. <laughs> Just I'm corn, so corn fairy mentality. <laughs> this corn, corn fairy mentality right there. Don't put a corn fairy player in a PGA Tour vehicle. <laughs> you think changing in the parking lot's bad form? Yes. Yeah, how are you? Good, Fantastic. The guy was instructed to come over here and tell us. Gentlemen, this is spyglass. You don't have to change the parking lot. This is it, man. Here we are. Spyglass. Time to uh, get after it. It's all business from here on out. Mark and Ryan are on property for the first time, so my job is sort of tour guide, consultant, cheerleader. I just want to help them sort of get their feet on the ground and get a feel for for the land and the air. If they can make the cut and get to Sunday, that would be fantastic. You gotta learn three golf courses. That's hard for everyone out here. They're some of the best golf courses in the world. It's not gonna be automatic, but I know he can do it. And it's gonna be fun watching him drive. I just wanted to show you this stunning view. <laughs> so nice, what color are you on? Uh, two, two green, and we spent so much time looking. We're on pace to finish tomorrow morning, but that's okay. I can't tell you how happy I am that I'm in shape, because this fucking place would kill me. <laughs> the guy's played nine holes out of spy. It absolutely looks like he belongs. He's just flushing it. The putter is rolling beautifully. I think he has a chance to play really well this week. It just doesn't get any cooler than this. Those first five holes out on the ocean, such beautiful holes. And then you turn back and play the holes back to the clubhouse up the hill, surrounded by incredible trees and large slopes. Just really have to have all the shots and be prepared for really anything that could come because those holes are very challenging. And that was a good start. As much fun as we can, and that was a great start. And that was a very good start. Is Sean here or not here? After announcing that Mark got into the AT&T, Ryan hears from a Twitter follower that has a connection to some lodging at a discounted rate. Another benefit this will do. of being in the big leagues. This will do very nicely. Another day, another practice round. And Ryan is also taking his game to the next level. There's been some criticism on my caddying about not getting the bag organized. This is by far the most organized the Mark Baldwin bag has ever been in my caddying career. I mean, we are, we have compartments for single things. It's unheard of. After going from the runway to the fairway yesterday, the dynamic duo has a lot more time to practice today, and they'll need it. There's worse drives to make, my friends. With three different courses, it's a delicate balance of chasing local knowledge and honing in Mark's game, not to mention, managing the distraction of the scenery. I'm just a tourist yeah. taking pictures here. Don't expect me I haven't even hit a shot yet. Mark has never played here. There's three courses. They're hard to learn. 
but all of that pales in comparison to the amazing opportunity we have. The challenge was getting to this point. Being here has been amazing. Ray, is this heaven? No, it's Monterey. It's not just standing on Pebble Beach, it's standing on Pebble Beach in the biggest event of Mark's life. The thing is, it is such a major, potentially life-changing opportunity to not let the weight of that hold me down. I'm good right here. I'll, I'll see you guys when you're done the back nine. <laughs> I have to just take it shot by shot. I've been preparing for 16 years for this moment. This week can change his life, but regardless, we're just gonna enjoy it. It's hard to put those moments into words. Walking up 18 was as religious as a non-religious person can be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. I really oh, loved it. A lot of fun. After another practice round, it was back to the hotel to reset for the afternoon. All right, who's this from? Graham, he's about 10, big fan, and he's just a great supporter, and he chose Lucky Quarters for the tournament for me. So these are the Lucky Ball Markers. Hey Mark, hope you do well in the tournament. I hope these ball markers are lucky ones. Thanks for being my friend. Have fun, Graham. Pretty special, dude. Very special. Pretty cool. Great family. You know, Wonderful great supporters. Group. All right, MGM hats. That's a cool one. That's the Sunday hat right there. I don't want any reaction besides yours, mm -hmm. Mr. French. Yeah. It looks good, dude. It's okay? Mm-hmm. Great. The first round at Pebble Beach Pro-Am was so nerve-wracking. I remember walking up on the first tee and it just like hit me like how crazy it was. Mark draws Steve Young, the NFL Hall of Fame quarterback, as his playing partner. He's paired with Peter Jacobson and singer-songwriter Ben Rector. Mike Fluff Cowan, another legend, is on Jacobson's bag. It's a foursome with a fun vibe, which bodes well for Baldwin. Pairing is perfect. We're as excited about the stories we're going to hear in the next three days as much as the golf tournament. On the 15th tee, which is our fifth hole, Ben Rector and Peter Jacobson were brought out two guitars from these people that were living on the hole, and, and Ben Rector sang a little song. Hey Steve, where's that dollar you owe me from the last hole? I'm looking for it. I take Venmo. I take Bitcoin. I'll take all your money by the time. It just loosened us up a bunch, and from that moment on, Mark played Amazing. Mark made like some really good up and downs to stay even. There was a moment when Mark and I were playing at Spyglass, started on the back nine, par five 14, hit a huge drive. He pulled it left of the green and he had an impossible third. And I was thinking, just get your par and get out. He hit a spectacular recovery, perfect speed, trickled down the bank and it rolled up like this and he made birdie. And I said to him, these are the kind of moments after hitting those kind of shots that Tiger and Jack and Faldo and Trevino and Hogan capitalize on. In round one, at one of the toughest courses on the PGA Tour, Baldwin makes three birdies, no bogeys, and shoots a 69, more than three better than the scoring average that day. To shoot bogey free on Spyglass, probably the hardest course out there. It was amazing. What I saw today there is nothing missing in his game. It's right there for him. Next up, Pebble Beach. Round two was at Pebble Beach, and Mark didn't play great, but he definitely didn't play bad. We got to know Peter Jacobson, and Peter was actively rooting for us. Mark played good enough to stay around the cut line, but also that just brings a whole new pressure. It was a lot of stress that day and leading into the next morning. Mark goes out in 34, but makes two bogeys on the back nine and shoots an even par, 72. I'll never forget Saturday. It was a three-day cut, and we were around the cut line, and on the back nine, he started to really play well. As a player or caddy, talk of the cut line, especially on the day of the cut, is generally a no-no. But that's not to say both player and caddy are always aware of what it is and where they stand. But on this day, on the 50th hole of the week, Mark gets on a timely hot streak. 
I'll never forget this. Mark hit seven iron, and as soon as the ball was in the air, he turned to me and said, we just made the cut at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Mark birdies four of his last five holes and shoots a five under 66 to make the cut with ease and sets himself up for a life-changing Sunday at Pebble Beach. Round three at Monterey Peninsula was the best round that I've ever seen Mark play. I will never forget it. It was the coolest thing ever. Huey Lewis just said to me, I'm counting on you tomorrow. I said, I said, don't worry, Huey Lewis, I will let you down. <laughs> it was a normal conversation. <laughs> I mean, what in the fuck has happened in the last nine days? What a day. What a day. Tomorrow, we're going to tee it up right there. <laughs> oh, my God. It doesn't get better than that. It doesn't. Well, it might tomorrow. Yep. It might tomorrow. 67 tomorrow, and I will not have any pants on on 18. Nine days ago, Mark Baldwin didn't have anywhere to play until July. The furniture. only reason I got out of staining all the furniture that we bought at a discount out of some Craigslist guy's garage was because I got a sponsor invite. An invite to come to Pebble Beach. I'll be playing that hole with coming down the stretch. thousands and thousands of people. With thousands of people lining the fairway. With potentially a chance at changing my life. And setting my family on course with financial security for the first time in the history of our lives. That's and nine wild. days ago, I was going to be staining discount furniture. Wow. That's the nine days right there, kids. That's... Those are nine days right. to remember. Everyone always asks, why do players continue to chase it? Why is Mark playing 16 years into his pro career? If you were here and could experience the things that Mark and I have, you would pretty quickly understand why players still chase it. You got your shoes, Mark? Yeah, they're up here. I'm a little mild, I was so tired this morning. Stretching out. We made the cut at Pebble Beach. And so going into Sunday, he was T19, definitely close enough that a good round would really kind of change his career. And, um, you know, Sunday was a struggle. Well, it's been a week. Here it's we are, week, dude. Pulling in to Pebble Beach on Sunday morning. Let's have a day, kids. Let's have a day. Let's say he shot 67 or 68 that day in top 10. He would have changed his life. And he didn't have his best game, so I don't think that was in the cards. But the two mistakes that we made on wind definitely cost him a couple strokes, cost him a lot of money. And so it stung a lot. That week was a dream come true. You played the best courses in the world. You played with legends. And Sunday you leave totally dejected. And it is just a great look into pro golf and how quickly the good moments are so fleeting. After making birdies on two of the first four holes, Mark hit a wall. He bogeyed three out of six holes in the middle of his round and made a costly double bogey on the 14th. Mark finishes T49 and earns a check of $21,000. Most successes don't feel like successes for a while. They feel like disappointments until you can put them in perspective. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a, a major win in every way, but... Right now, it doesn't feel like it. It just doesn't feel like it. I think Mark Baldwin can win championships, and I'm hoping he gets his card so when I'm out on the road with NBC and Golf Channel, I can walk up to him every day and tell him how good he is, because I believe that. Mark got a lot of encouraging words that week. It wasn't just from Peter Jacobson. He also got a memorable text from his playing partner. Watched every shot. I'm sure you're slightly bummed, but this week was about grit and excellence. You inspired me as I witnessed it. I've seen a lot in my days, and I went along for your soaring ride because I was drawn into your incredible skill. You don't have a weakness. As Peter kept saying, use this as a springboard forward, both on confidence and opportunity. Onward, Steve Young. About sums up how insane the week was. 
for Mark, there's not a lot of wiggle room to sit back, relax, and process what just happened. It's back to packing and refocusing on the future, which is the Monday qualifier for the Waste Management Phoenix Open. All right, fellas, what do you think, what do you put the chances at us actually making our play right now? 11% right now. It's a race against time. It's right back to the grind. All right, so here's the deal. We ran from the course through, literally, threw all of our clothes together, dropped the car off, ran to Hertz, rented a car there, bolted for San Francisco, 610 flight, too late, can't make it, canceled that flight, now looking for an eight o'clock flight. Mark, update. Purchased. Come on, seriously. Purchased. Come on. Fellas, we're going, go. we're going to Phoenix tonight. Let's go. We're going to Phoenix tonight. We're going to play in that Monday. Let's go. The grind continues. Let's go. This is about betting on yourself, okay? Tomorrow, we have a tee time for a Monday qualifier for the Waste Men. I was offered $3,000 to play nine holes on Monday in Monterey. I turned it down to pay $500 to sit in this traffic to cancel a flight simultaneously, book a new flight instead of accepting that offer. At Waste Management, Mark misses again, but his story is far from over. Next week on The Grind, right along with Paige Crawford. Golf is something I just can't get away from and I'm willing to grind. I'm willing to live in a van. <laughs>